So multimodal text. When you say multi, it means many, right? And then what is mode? Okay, multimodal text. So what is that? Ay, teka lang. Ano ba to? F5. Ayaw niya mag-proceed. Ayan. So a multimodal text uh, can be defined as multimodal when two or more semiotic systems are being combined. Okay, pag sinabi natin semiotic systems, it can be linguistic and visual. When we say linguistic, we're talking about vocabulary, we're talking about grammar, oral, and written language. But when we say vo uh, visual, we're talking about the color combination, okay? The color combination that you have put in your uh, multimodal text, the viewpoint in still and moving images. So, like what I am doing now, the PowerPoint presentation, and at the same time, I am explaining the lecture, is an example of a multimodal text. And not only this, so later I'll be showing you some examples. Now, when we say multimodal, it can be in a form of paper, it can be digital, and it can also be live. So when we say paper, it's like uh, we, uh, you have seen different books, comics, and posters. And in different books, it's not only text. Hindi lang text ang nakalagay doon. There are, there are also images inside that uh, specific textbook. And then comics as well is an example of a multimodal because it has images and at the same time it has text. The same thing with posters. I know when you were in elementary and secondary and even senior high school, you have uh, given a task to make a poster okay, or poster making contest. Okay, so there is a text. At the same time, there is an image. And of course, if you are an artist, you know the color combination. Diba? So, alam mo kung anong ikukulay mo dito sa, dito sa gilid at dito sa kabila. Alright? Now, the other one is the multimodal text can be digital. So, it can be a slide presentation like what I am doing now. It can be ebooks, blogs, or vlogs. The one that I have provided you in the different lectures. Okay, there is a PowerPoint presentation, and at the same time, Manteranya is explaining the lecture. And then e-posters, web pages, social media like Facebook, Messenger, Instagram. Okay, those are examples of multimodal because it has images, and at the same time, it has its own caption. And then it can also be done through animation, film, and video games. So like uh, ML, okay, I know some of you here are playing ML or the Mobile Legend. So Mobile Legend is also an example of a multimodal. Why? Because it has images, it has sound, uh, it has moving uh, objects or like there is an animation and etc, etc. So that is a multimodal one. And then the other one is it can be live. It can be performed in an event. Let's say for example, the ballet dancing. Uh, the, uh, the theater presentation, okay, those are multimodal, okay? And then, okay, so we have this what we call semiotic systems. When we say semiotic, we are talking about the signs symbols, okay? So here are the different semiotic systems. Number one, it can be a linguistic or textual system. So when we say that, it comprises the different aspects like vocabulary, the generic structure, and the grammar of oral and written language as I have, as I have mentioned a while ago. So it's like whenever you are going to put a po uh, whenever you are going to make a poster or an advertisement, you have to make sure uh, the grammar, okay, the, the sentence structure, and also the vocabulary, because sometimes words can give different meaning. Even the images can give different meaning. So you have to be careful on that. Number two is the visual system. So in here, I have mentioned a while ago, we're talking about the color combination, the vectors, the viewpoints in still and moving images. So I know you have seen a lot of examples in EDSA, like uh, yung mga billboards, okay? And you will see there like Ann Curtis drinking blue water, pero uh, others are... Uh, observing or they, they notice that Ann Curtis is drinking blue uh, blue water with you know, uh, with a cap may cover siya, di ba? Parang sinasabi ng iba, 
parang may mali dun sa i, i, pinopromote ni Ann Curtis. She's drinking water, pero naka-close naman yung cap. Di ba yung mga ganong bagay? And then, uh, the third one is the audio system. Okay? With aspects like volume, pitch, rhythm of music, and sound effects. Now, let's say for example, I am your speaker this, uh, uh, this morning. And then, I <clears throat> explain the topic like this. Here are the different semiotic systems. Number one, linguistic or textual system. The other one is visual system. The third one is the audio system. The fourth one is the spatial system. Now, if I do this kind of volume and also pitch, then I guess my my uh, my audience will will sleep, okay, or will get bored. Ganon. Okay, so when we say pitch, that is the highness or lowness of tone. You're going to have this what we call high pitch if you are emphasizing something to your audience. Okay? And then the next one is the gestural system. From the word itself, it's gesture. Guys, it's not ge. Okay? A lot of students uh, uh, pronounce the word gesture as gesture. Guys, it's not ge, it's je. Sounds J. Okay, I hope I am clear. Even if you look at uh, in the dictionary, uh, it's J or the sound J. Or even in Google, pakinggan nyo pong mabuti, it's gesture, not a gesture. Okay, now the gestural system includes movement, speed, and stillness in facial expression and body language. Uh, we've talked about uh, the different common barriers. Okay, and how we are going to overcome it. Okay, in a multicultural setting, we've talked about that. And I told you that you have to be careful with the body language. You have to be careful with the different signs. Okay, the different signs like this, like this. Okay, like this. Okay, and like this. And then this one and that one. You have to be careful. Why? Because others might get offended on the actions that you are uh, showing to them. Even uh, ma 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 pa face to face man yan or ma pa virtual like this one, you have to be. You still have to be careful, and it is very necessary that you have to know your audience, or you have to know the background of your audience. And then when it comes to speed, so I know it's your pacing, de ba? Pero ang speed po natin eh hindi naman napakabilis. Na parang nagmamadali tayo, na parang may hinahabol tayo, de ba? Kailangan relax lang. It should be uh, in a moderate way. Okay, may moderation na tinatawag. Uh, let's say, for example, in your Pecha Kucha, because there is 20 seconds presentation, you talk like this. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Lizette Piterania. I'm a graduate of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English, and I've also studied at the National Teachers College and graduated my master's degree, major in English, and etc., etc., etc. Diba? Sobrang bilis. So if you talk that way, your audience might give their own feedback on how you present your topic. And then the other one is the spatial system. This covers aspects like proximity, direct position of layout, and organization of objects in space. So in a billboard or in a poster or in, ad in an advertisement, you should know how to uh, do the proper layout. You should know uh, how to... Uh, organize the objects in in a space. Diba? Halimbawa, mas malaki ba dapat ang images ko kesa sa text ko? Or mas malaki ba dapat yung text ko kesa sa images ko? So that is what we call spatial system. So look at this example. Oh, I'm sorry. This one. Okay? You'll see Pepsi. Ayan, there's a skinny woman. Diba? Drinking pep, uh, Pepsi in a skinny can. Diba sabi dyan, the new skinny can. Look at the, the word new. Naka-blue naka siya. Diba? Parang ini-emphasize niya that this is the new product that a Pepsi have. Alright? And then, uh, the other one is comics. That's another example of multimodal. And uh, under it is brochure. Brochure is also an example of multimodal where you can see there the different images 
that the people are selling or trying to ad to advertise and then may prices then at yung uso ngayon there is already what we call QR code it's like by scanning it you will see all the information of the product that you are trying to uh, advertise to many people okay i hope this one is uh, understood all right next so we have different types of multimodal as i have mentioned a while ago it can be paper and can be digital uh, we have uh, for paper books comics flyers for business it's not fires okay sorry for the typographic error it's flyers for business picture books and etc for digital, we have different social media application, the slide presentation. YouTube is another example where you can see there uh, different uh, videos on how, let's say, for example, on how to uh, manipulate this one, on how to cook and how to, to clean and how to, okay, and the different tips. And then uh, the speaker will, uh, you know, the speaker will explain everything, okay, with a... Uh, with a text, the ba? So, yan po yung tinatawag nating multimodal. And I've told you a while ago that it can also be live performance, the ba? Like ballet dancing or the, the one that you see in, uh, recall this? The one that you see in theater, okay? Or yung drama presentation that it has background music, the ba? But guys, uh, if you are going to have your drama presentation or let's say your pecha kucha, and then you are putting some uh, background music. Well, tingnan nyo rin. Is that music connection with the one that you are presenting? Or baka naman sobrang loud yung background music mo, tapos hindi na masyadong naiintindihan yung nagsasalita or yung bosses mo. Okay, so careful on that. And then transmedia, it includes the various platforms in storytelling involving the audience. So uh, the best example here is for elementary students. And for kindergarten students, diba? the teacher is showing a video of uh, the, the alphabet, okay, the different shapes, the colors. Kasi mas, mas na motivate ang estudyante kapag may ganon. And even in college, diba? it's not always a PowerPoint presentation. Sometimes your teacher or your professor is showing you a video, okay, just to motivate you to listen. Uh, just to motivate you to listen and to participate in class. So those are examples of transmedia. So here is your activity. Please screenshot it. Paki screenshot po natin. So this is an advertisement making. And, and this one has connection with the next topic that I'll be showing you. Okay, advertisement, uh, advertisement making or advertisement. In group at least of five members, think of any cost oriented event and do the following. But of course, you are, I am not going to group you anymore because you already have your group in MS Teams. So kung ano yung grupo po ninyo last time, yun din po ang grupo nyo ngayon. Okay? So number two, print a copy of your advertisement. No need to print because you are not going to submit that in face-to-face. -face. Uh, you just need to save your uh, ad in JPEG and then you will post it in our wake lab. Okay, and then you are going to show it to another group and the other group will give their own feedback about your presentation or about your, your advertisement. Pero hindi nakarely doon yung inyong grade. Okay, that depends on how I see, okay, how I see your presentation. And then I'm done. So next is, the next one is, wait lang. Stop presenting. So let me show you another video presentation, uh, another uh, PowerPoint presentation, which is about evaluating text and images. So we're done with the multimodal text, but of course we have to be careful with what we are putting. That is why we are going to study the evaluating text and images. Ayan. So wait for a while. It's still loading. Okay. So after my class, I'll go to TUP. Okay. Uh, 
Can you see my slide? The evaluating texts and images through critical reading and viewing. Do you yes. see it? Yes. OK, very good. So let's start. So our objective here is to analyze the media messages and or images using key concepts of media literacy framework. So later I'll be showing you the media literacy framework. This one is that uh, the one that you are going to follow whenever you are uh, making your advertisement. And then you are going to create a multimodal advertisement of a cost oriented event. So this has something in connection with the multimodal uh, activity that I have provided a while ago. So this one, look at the picture and then tell me your observation. It's very slow. Ayan. Okay, so look at that. What is your observation on the trash bin or the trash can? So look at the image and look at the text. So this one, I was the one who took a photo of it. Kasi sabi ko, oy, magagamit ko to sa aking klase na evaluating text and images. Kaya ako siya pinikturan. So can anybody here give an observation regarding the photo or the image? Yes, Danielle. <laughs> observation about the trash bin is uh, based on the text it said that it is biodegradable so it only uh, it is only useful for uh, biodegradable uh, trash like foods mainly in foods that that is because uh, foods can be rotten so sabi nga po dyan nabubulok and it is only for a second floor Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Danie uh, Danielle. So aside from that, yes, may I call Mr. Madrid? For me, ma'am, what I was attracted to is that the huge photo of, or for the huge logo of the TUP. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, ma'am, if this is just for me, this is, uh, it's not that inappropriate to have that kind of logo. Mm -hmm. Because um, it looks like that one is emphasized rather, that one is more emphasized rather than rather than the, the nabubulok word or the label of the trash bin. That is right. So aside from that, thank you, Mr. Madrid. Very good. So another, the, the logo is too big, diba? So how about you, Mr. De Los Angeles? Yes, ma'am. For me po. Yes, my dear. Hello. I can hear you. Yeah. For me po, they choose the color green to, mm -hmm. to <clears throat> represent the biodegradable because its color is nature friendly. Like, they color code the trash bins. Okay. So, all right. So, thank you, Mr. De Los Angeles. Another, aside from that, I know some of you here have ideas. So why not uh, voice it out? Try to to share. Try to share your ideas. Wag mahihiyang mag, wag mahihiyang sumagot, hindi magtanong. Aha, uh -huh. dali. Anybody? Wala, ay grabe. Tingnan niyo mabuti. Look at the logo and look at the text. And then tell me your observation. There is no wrong answer here because I'm asking for your observation. So may I ask another students, please? Uh, can somebody please volunteer? Wala. Ay, grabe naman. Parang naninibago ako sa non-STEM ko, ah. None of you would like, uh, wouldn't like to answer? Yes, my dear. You're raising your hand, General. Po, yes, po. Ma'am, hindi ko po makitang presentation po, ma'am. Ay, mahina siguro ang internet mo, Nak. Sige lang, later I'll be posting this uh, video para at least uh, makita Thank mo. You. Thank you po, ma'am. You're welcome. So, Miss Generos Corrales, yes, my dear, you share. Yes po, ma'am. Aside po dun sa um, malaking picture, logo po, mm -hmm. parang napagdugdong niya po yung TUP tagig na bubulok. Parang Ayan. yung means po, 
nabubulok po yung TV talaga. Ganun po yung pagkakaintindi ko pa. Very good. Okay, that's the one thing that I have seen also. Yun din yung pagkakaintindi ko when I see that TUP tagig nabubulok. So some spaces, okay, after the word TUP. And actually, even if you don't put the TUP tagig there, there is a big logo on top of it. Tama ba? So kahit wala na yung TUP tagig na word, or pwede rin naman nating tanggalin yung logo, ilagay natin TUP tagig on top of it, and then spaces, and then sa ilalim, nabubulok or biodegradable under the Basic Arts and Sciences Department, second floor. Diba? So, kung titignan nyo, TUP Tagig, nabubulok. Are you going to enroll in a university na nabubulok? <laughs> o, diba? O, diba? Tatawa kayo. Tama yan eh. So, very good. Pero, binawi naman nitong next picture. So, look at the next picture. Tama ko po. <laughs> yes. Oh, you wanna say something? Go. Apo. Okay, go. Yung... Yung... Napansin ko lang po yung logo ng year po, 1901, pero dapat po 1991. Actually, it's ni actually it's 1901 nga. Uh, oo, 1901. Ay, sorry po. Oo, uh, uh, 1901 talaga siya. Yun yung pagkakabuilt ni TUP before uh, it was MTI. MTI ang tawag. Okay, but thank you. So next, uh, ayaw niyo mag-move. Ayan. Ayan, bawiin naman natin sa sumunod na image. Ang bagal niya, promise. Okay, so let's wait for this one. Kanina, TUP Tagig, nabubulok. Right, let's have this one. Ah, naririnig niyo ba yung ingay? Pasensya na kayo. Okay, so where we have here, TUP Tagig, mapapakinabangan. Kaya lang, sinasabi mo dito that TUP Tagig is recyclable. Okay? Kanina, TUP Tagig nabubulok. Ngayon, TUP Tagig na, mapapakinabangan. So, that's a positive thing. Kaya lang, there is recyclable. Okay? So, again, another another uh, observation. Uh, we can also remove the logo, put the TUP Tagig on top of it, or tanggalin yung TUP Tagig, have that logo. Diba? Nakalagay lang Technological University of the Philippines and then under that, mapapakinabangan or recyclable. But is there something wrong with the color of the trash bin? Anybody can unmute? Wala? Pag recyclable ba, what color should it be? Green po, ma'am. Green po, ma'am. Okay, kaya lang ginamit na nga naman yung green sa uh, kanina, doon sa nabubulok. Pero it's okay, di ba? Pero ang pinaka-main focus natin dito is the text. Okay, TUP Tagig, mapapakinabangan. Okay yan because that is positive. But what if dun sa una na TUP Tagig, nabubulok? Okay, so next. Look at this one. September 11 every day. Why don't we call it a terrorism? So what is your uh, observation on this advertisement? Anybody? Look at that. So they are promoting uh, awareness on cigarette smoking. Kasi sabi dyan, why don't we call it a terrorism? Because uh, every day there are people dying because of smoking or because of cigarette. Kaya lang, do you think this one is offensive? Do you think this one is culturally yes. offensive? Yes, ma'am. Why yes? Can you share? Why did you say yes? Or how did you come up saying yes that it is culturally offensive? Anybody? Tagalog, sige. I will allow. Yes, Ken. Um, Ken? Narinig po ko, ma'am. Yes, my dear. Ayun po. Um, it's culturally offensive sa ano sa iba po ma'am kasi most of most of the people uh, smoke cigarettes in in all parts of the world and not all cigarette smokers are terrorists and um how do you say this um Mm -hmm. So you are pertaining uh, to the cigarette smokers. 
Yes. Okay, that you, you call them a terrorist. All right. Thank you. Aside from that, yes, Mr. Aldwin, got po. Um, tingin, tingin ko po na offensive po siya. Offensive? Kasi sa ano po. Yung logo niya po, mm -hmm. na parang 9-11 po sa ibang bansa, na yung terrorism po na nangyari nung hinijack po yung airplane. Parang ganun po yung pagkakalogo niya. Okay, Yun. very good. So that one talaga, it's a 9-11 attack in the United States. Diba? That two cigarettes, uh, those two cigarettes, I, ano, yan yung twin tower. Diba? And you can see the airplane. So sinabi lang dyan, why don't we call, we call it terrorism? Because uh, people are dying every day, sabi niyan. Kaya lang, is it okay? Okay ba yan? Na irerelate mo ito dun sa twin tower, sa pangyayaring ganun in the United States. Diba? So, the mostly affected people here, yung, yung pamilya ng victims. And if they see that, do you think they, meet, they will be offended? Yes, po. Yes, they will be offended. Diba? Kasi bakit mo i-relate yung cigarette dun sa 9-11 attack? So, culturally, this is really offensive. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Tama ba ako, Gat po? Very good. Uh, next. Look at this one. Bagal naman. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yan. This one. Save the whales, lose the blubber, go vegetarian. So, blubber is taba. Okay? Taba na makukuha sa isang isda. Okay? So, ano yan? Oh, aside from Mr. Gatpo, aside from that, aside from him, sino pa ang uh, gustong sumagot? Save the whales. Lose the blubber. Go vegetarian. So what's wrong with the image? Aside from Kent. Yes, Magbata. Mr. Magbata, Mark. Yung ano po, ma'am. Yung mataba pong nakatalikod po, ma'am. Okay. So what is Para, that? Ano po. Ine-emphasize po na ano po. Whales po yung matataba po. Oh, yun. Diba? So that's body shaming. But it's an example of body shaming. It's like, is it a stereotyping or prejudice? Stereotyping. Na iniisip mo, na kapag mataba, balyena. Tama ba? Kapag okay. mataba, balyena agad. Di ba ganun ang nangyayari? So that is body shaming. So that also offend people. And, that, and if that offends people, then you lose your objective. Okay? Ang objective mo kasi is i-promote. Kaya lang, what you are promoting is something that discriminate other people. Alright, so look at this one. Printed hooded top. So there are different colors, orange, black, and green. So what's wrong with the image? Yeah, teka lang. Yes, uh, sila sila lang. Yes, Horka Jules, Rian. Yung text po, ma'am, na nasa ano, jacket po ng bata. Okay. Monkey. Parang, parang sinasabi niya po yung monkey yung bata. That's right. Diba? So, this is an H&M. Okay, the, the H&M signature. And uh, they were bashed, okay, by these black people. Kasi it is a form of uh, discriminating, discriminating them. And racist, diba? Or racism. Uh, ayun nga, so parang inire-relate nila that these black people are all, uh, looks like, uh, that these people look like monkeys. ba? Na maling-mali. ba? Hindi natin pwede i-relate yung color nila doon sa isang animal. Ayan, pero uh, humingi naman ng pasensya ang H&M that they did not mean to discriminate the child or discriminate the kid. Okay, coolest monkey in the jungle. So what should, uh, kung ikaw halimbawa, you are the H&M, Ano ang ilalagay mo dyan? Is it coolest monkey in the jungle or coolest kid in the jungle? Ganun pa rin. You have the word jungle. Hmm. So kung kayo kaya, ano kaya ang ilalagay nyo dyan na text dyan sa hoodie na yan? O yan, i-reserve nyo yan kasi ilalagay nyo po yan sa inyong susunod na activity. Okay, kasi mag evaluate nga kayo eh. Ting tingnan nyo ha, you know how to evaluate it. You've seen already the text written on the hoodie. Diba? And you have related it to the kid. 
na maitim na sinabing monkey agad, ba? Diba? So, hindi dapat ganon. Next, look at this one. When ordinary soap just won't do, kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria for clean hands every day. So, who would like to give comments on this image or on this advertisement? Yes, uh, Tesorero. Um, ano po, ma'am? Nagpo para pong nagpo-promote siya ng krimen. Yeah. Ng, ano ma'am kasi parang sabi nila ma'am na yung sabon kaya nilang tanggalin yung dugo na uh -oh. pagkatapos mong pumatay. Oo, uh -oh. parang it's like even if you kill people, it can easily be erased by this kind of soap, 'di ba? So, medyo offending din siya, offensive siya at at the same time, hindi maganda yung promotion niya na parang pumatay siya ng tao. Na parang okay lang kasi may sabon naman na distol. Okay? So next, look at this. Ayan, hindi na to. Okay, so to be an effective listener, the following suggestions are given. So not only listeners but also the speaker. Okay, number one, you have to seek for clarification. So what is this? Uh, it says here we need to clarify things before we, we respond to comments and queries that can potentially lead to arguments. So it is really happening in a social media. Nasabi ko nga sa inyo, before you post anything on a social media, you have to think twice or thrice or many times. Okay? Because sabi nga, that can potentially lead to arguments. Or another thing, if somebody posted at feeling mo natamaan ka, don't just give your comment. You clarify first. You ask first. Kasi baka hindi naman talaga para sa'yo. Okay? Na, na darating sa point na in a social media or in that specific uh, uh, post, nag-aaway na doon sa, sa, sa comment box. Yeah, I, I, I have seen people who are doing that. Diba? Especially if uh, the one is pro-Duterte and the other one is anti-Duterte. Once, uh, once he posted something, the pro Duterte will uh, will give comment, and the anti Duterte will also give another feedback. So yun ang nangyayare. Kaya you have to be careful. And then number two, empathize, respect the feelings and beliefs of other speaker. So kapag ang isang tao ay nagpost ng something sa social media, you respect because that is his own uh, perception. Diba? Hindi, ka pwedeng, hindi mo pwedeng panghimasukan yung paniniwala niya at yung perception niya. Be kind, tactful, and understanding while listening to the other or to the others. So it's like, if you are believing in your God, halimbawa, ito yung pinaniniwalaan mo, just believe in your God. Do not inject to other people that, hey, you should believe in our God. Because if you believe in your God, uh, if you die, you will go with Satan. Yung may mga ganung bagay, so kailangan hindi hindi mo i-inject sa kanila. You can share, but you have to make sure na hindi mo natatapakan yung kanilang paniniwala at yung kanilang kultura, yung customs and traditions. And then as a speaker, so you also have to be careful. Or kung ikaw ang gagawa ng ads, kailangan careful ka din sa mga ilalagay mo. Na aalamin mo kung wala ba akong matatapakang tao dito. Okay, next, you have to be sensitive to verbal and non-verbal cues. Listen not only to what is being said, but also how it is being said. So, ito, this one has no long, uh, it has no connection with uh, making uh, this advertisement. Kapag kayo po ay nagsalita sa unahan, or if you will be invited, okay, virtually or face to face, kailangan po uh, maging sensitive tayo sa mga sinasabi ng speakers or sa sinasabi din ng listeners. Sabi nga, if I am the speaker and you are my listeners, at may nasabi akong isang bagay, you have to listen to what is being said, kung ano yung sinabi ko. And also, to how it is being said. Alimbawa, sinabi ko, you know what? Ang hina mo, no? Ganyan. You know what? Ang hina mo. You know what? Ang hina mo. So look at the tone. Diba? Look at how I I said those words. Diba? Parang iba-iba. Pag sinabi, alam mo, parang ang hina mo. It's like you are joking. Pag sinabi, you know what? Ang hina mo. Diba? So with that, yung how it is being said, magbibigay na kasi siya ng ibang meaning. Diba? Kaya nga sa social media, napakahirap. Diba? Especially kapag, alam mo yun, your presence is not there. 
it's only the text that you have posted. Diba? So, ang dami nang nagbibigay ng reactions doon sa ipinost mo. Parang simpleng post mo nga lang eh. The people will chat you or will say, siguro may problema siya sa pamilya, no? May mga ganung bagay. So, that, that is why we have to be uh, careful. Okay, we have to be uh, effective listeners or viewers. Okay? And according to Ferdinand, he's so sure, a Swiss linguist explains that every sign or symbol has two main components. One is the signifier and the other one is the signified. Sorry for the typographic error. It's signified. Okay, signifier and signified. So what is that? I'll explain that. So signifier, it's an object. It's a word or an image that represents the concept. When I say cell phone, it's a signifier. Okay, it's an object. It's a word. Okay, but when I say signified, that refers to the concepts which the signifier refers to. And this would be the meaning that is drawn by the receiver of the sign. Halimbawa, sinabi kong cell phone. Yung mental concept mo sa cell phone ay communication. Another mental concept mo sa cell phone is Vivo, Apple, Samsung, and etc. Okay, that is what we call signified. Yun yung mental concept mo dun sa sinabi kong word. Okay, so look at this. Mas madaling maintindihan. So sign is the object or thing. And then it is divided into two. One is signifier and the other one is signified. So look at the example. The signifier is the physical existence. The sound of it, the word, the image. You've seen apple, it's red. You've seen apple, it's a, it's a heart shape or round shape. You've seen apple, it's an image. Nakita mo yung leaf? So syempre, ang apple may leaf, di ba? So signifier ang tawag doon. Kapag signified naman, it's a mental concept. When I say Apple, ang papasok sa utak mo, mamahalin. Mamahaling cell phone, mamahaling gadget, mamahaling laptop. Okay, another another mental concept. Pag sinabi natin Apple, naiisip mo doktor. Kasi sabi ng doctor, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Diba? That's another. And then it's fresh. It's fruit. Okay? And temptation. Why temptation? You know, Adam and Eve? Diba kung ano kinain ni, ni Eve? Diba it's an apple? So that is temptation. Then yun po ang sinasabi nating signified. Your mental concept about a thing or an object. I hope this one is very clear. So look at this one. Okay. Sign. Ayan. Is a signifier and signified. Okay. And then we also have this. Ito very important tung denotation and connotation in making your advertisement. Or in making any na ipopost mo na makikita ng maraming tao. So pag sinabi natin denotation, it's a precise description of the sign. When we say precise description, the meaning of it can be seen in the dictionary and in Google. Okay? So yung meaning niya, yun yung nasa dictionary, yun yung nasa Google. But when we say connotation, that is your mental concept generated from a specific signifier or sign. Example. When I say crocodile, the denotation of crocodile is a reptile or is a kind of animal. Now, what about connotation of crocodile? Yung naiisip mo, yung pumapasok sa isip mo kapag narinig mo ang buaya or ang crocodile. So can you give me? Somebody please unmute. Um, yes, Mr. Madrid. Dangerous po, ma'am. Dangerous. Yon, corrupt officials. Politicians, di ba? So, yun yung mga naiisip natin. Another, when I say snake, the denotation is, it's also a reptile. It's also an animal. But its connotation is, oh, please unmute. Sige best lang. Friend. Best friend, di ba? Aha, Chapo. best Chapo. friend. Another. Who does? Traitor, ma'am. Who does? Grabe, who does? <laughs> who does? Traitor or traitor, di ba? Ha? Chinelas? Kabit. Kabit. Okay. So, yun po yung connotation. I hope this is being understood. Na naunawaan po ba ang ibig sabihin ng denotation and connotation? Yes po. Yes po. So, ganito pa. Uh, an example is this. You want to say something, uh, you want to say uh, to other people that your colleague or your friend is funny. 
Okay? Kaya lang, nakita mo kasi sa Google that uh, parang somehow the other term for funny is hilarious. Pero tingnan mo muna kasi ang ibig sabihin ng hilarious. Di ba? Kasi ang hilarious in Filipino is katawa-tawa. Okay? Ang funny is nakakatawa. Is there, is there a difference between the two? You will say, you know what? My boss is very hilarious. Alam mo ba yung aking boss ay katawa-tawa? You know what? My boss is very funny. Alam mo ba yung aking boss ay na nakakatuwa? So may pinagkaiba yung dalawa. So you have to be careful on the words that you are going to use. Kasi iisipin ng isa, paano ako naging katawa-tawa? Bakit ako naging katawa-tawa? So that will create argument again. Diba? Magbibigay na another meaning yan. Especially, boss mo yung sinabihan mo na katawa-tawa. Okay? So that is denotation and connotation pa rin. So be careful on the vocabulary, be careful on your grammar, and etc. Okay? So here is uh, the photo or the image that I have shown you a while ago. Sabi dito, when the signifier in the advertisement is culturally offensive, kapag nakaka-offend tayo, okay, ng ibang kultura or ng kapwa natin, you fail to achieve your goal. Kasi if your goal is pasikatin itong produkto na to, pero ang, ang nangyari po ay na-offend yung maraming tao, then you fail to achieve your goal. Okay, so next one. Cultural sensitivity. So, lagi kong sinasabi yan sa inyo, you have to be sensitive. It has something to do with uh, cultural relativism. Una, intindihin mo kung ano ang kulay, kung anong feature meron sila. Intindihin mo kung anong customs and traditions meron sila. Kung anong religion, kung ano yung language nila, and so on and so forth. So, that is cultural sensitivity. Sabi dyan, you have to be aware and you have to acknowledge the cultural differences of people all over the globe okay or all around the world okay next so here are the key concepts of media literacy i have told you a while ago that this will be your criteria in making your ads diba hindi ko na ito i-discuss sa inyo basahin niyo na lang po madali naman po siyang intindihin gaya nga ng sinabi ko sa sa inyo kanina my boss is hilarious my boss is funny ngayon ang nakalagay diyan what message do you perceive from the text Ano yung pagkakaintindi mo sa text na hilarious? Diba? Ano yung pagkakaintindi mo sa text na funny? How might others understand it differently? So parang, ay grabe siya, no? Sinabihan niya, nakatawa-tawa yung kanyang boss, tapos sinabi dun sa boss mo, patay ka. Diba? So that's an example. Uh, ito po yung mga key questions na kailangan yung i-consider whenever you are making an ad. Okay? Or creating an ad. Okay? So it's like one of my students uh, during my, during... Uh, the second term, I think, yung hindi pa nagla-lockdown, I have given this kind of activity and I told them to make a tagline. Tagline of their product that they want to introduce to many people. Ito ang kanilang ginawa. Manga Go. Manga on the go. So what they're promoting is mango shake, ha? It's mango shake. Pero sabi niya, manga go. Manga on the go. So, kumbaga ako, bibili ako, tara sa manggago, bili tayo, manggago. Diba? So, that will create different meaning. So, you have to be uh, very careful on that. Okay? So, next is the activity. Medyo mabagal yung respond, response ng aking laptop. Okay. So, this one. Ayan. So, screenshot nyo na po. Nakalagay dyan. From the social media, specifically Facebook or Instagram, okay, copy or download a post and give your observation and generalization on how the text and image is presented. Then, relate it with the different cultures and cite some disadvantages on how it is introduced. Present it in front of the class. Siyempre, hindi mo na present sa class mo. What you are going to do is to submit it to our waitlet. So, dalawang activities, ha? The other one is ads. And the other one uh, is, uh, ito, yung copied and downloaded image na merong explanation. Bakit siya naging uh, culturally offensive? Bakit siya merong disadvantages? Okay, so ito po yung inyong gagawin. And it's by group again. So same group pa rin. 
And guys, do not forget the names of your members in submitting your assignment. Kasi ang nangyayari, pipicturean ko pa kayo at sasabihin niyo sa akin kung sino to. Diba? So, yun lang po. Is there any question? Ma'am, kailan po yung submission? Next week. The submission will be next week. Ganun lagi eh. Once I give you an assignment today, the submission will be next week. Para at least you have your time. Ma'am, ma'am. Teka lang po. At alam ko kapag dinownload nyo lang sa Google, yung tipong nag... nag uh, hindi na kayo naghahanap sa social media or sa Facebook nang pwede nyong ilagay. Alam ko kapag downloaded yan. Yes, anak. Anong tanong mo? Required po ba mam magsalita lahat dyan po sa second group? Not necessarily. Just choose your presenter. May limit po bang maximum of three? Maximum of three. Okay po, ma'am. Thank you. Marami na kayo masasabi dun sa three minutes. Okay? So, some more questions? Ma'am, dalawa po bang activity gagawin namin, ma'am? Yes po. Yung una, gagawa kayo ng ad. So, ito yun eh. I don't know kung makikita nyo eh. Saglit lang. Ito yung pinagawa ko sa estudyante ko noong hindi pa nagla-lockdown. Noong face-to-face. -face. Ayan. Kapaligiran 2020. Ay, hindi nyo makikita, no? Ganto na lang. Pipicturean ko na lang siya. Kasi may, may, may background kasi ako eh. Okay, hindi siya makikita. So, ganun. Uh, Ipo-post ko na lang sa inyong group yung sample ng ad na gagawin ninyo. Kasi, di ba, parang uh, cost-oriented ang gagawin nyo. Sa kanila naman, ang ginawa nila is run for a cost. Tapos, ang tagline nila, kapaligi run 2020. Hindi yung kapaligi run. Kapaligi run, R-U-N, 2020. A run to save the Mother Earth. That's the tagline of a cost-oriented event. And then, ilalagay nila sa ilalim yung uh, details ng kanilang cost-oriented event. Okay? So, any more question? Wow, naka one hour ako. Actually, wala pa naman one hour kasi late na ako nag-start. Late nag-start kasi we are waiting for some. May questions pa po ba? If there are no more questions, uh, you conceptualize it, you talk with your group mates, and you can leave the room now. God bless you and thank you so much. Thank you po. Keep safe. Um, keep safe. Yeah, Ingat kayong lahat. Thank you, ma'am. Natuto po ba? May natutunan? Thank you po, ma'am. Yes, ma ma okay, very good. So, thank you so much.